Good afternoon, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and I've got a detailed forecast update on the thunderstorm situation and outbreak that is about to kick itself off through central, southern and southeastern Queensland. This includes Brisbane and the Gold Coast. I'm going to be going through things uh, for southeast Queensland as well as for central Queensland. This is a detail packed update so stick around to the end and if you do end up enjoying this video and like my channel then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Just starting things off with today, Thursday afternoon, there's some pretty significant thunderstorms beginning to develop through central parts of Queensland in particularly around the Augathella and Charleville area uh, which has already had a good thunderstorm or two this afternoon then up towards Longreach and towards uh, east of Longreach towards Jericho we've got some good thunderstorm activity developing up there as well it's all been driven by a lot of moisture that's coming in off the Coral Sea today we've got heaps of moisture flowing in in the mid-levels from the Coral Sea over the central Queensland coastline and also parts of the north Queensland coastline and it's all being met, met up with more moisture coming in from the northwest and that's meeting to collide and create thunderstorms in this part of Queensland here there's no severe thunderstorm warning out issued yet. However, one of the one or two of these thunderstorms are beginning to catch my eye, and they could have plenty of rainfall and maybe even some damaging wind gusts within them as well. It looks like one or two of them, particularly towards the south of Charleville, are beginning to intensify, and also a few of them up around the Augathella area could be beginning to intensify as well. So these thunderstorms here, one to watch, but are non-severe at this point in time, and not something that I would be overly concerned about. And throughout the remainder of today, we're expecting these thunderstorms to continue developing uh, until about this evening, when they will begin to collapse in on themselves. There's also a chance the thunderstorm area out around the Injun and the Roma areas we get out towards later this afternoon into early this evening. We're not expecting thunderstorms in southeast Queensland today but this is going to start off what, we, uh, what we're what we beginning to see as the rainfall event from this uh, low pressure system that's moving through interior parts of Queensland so we're still going to get all of this moisture here streaming in from interior parts of the Coral Sea across the central Queensland coastline into interior Queensland and then later tonight that's going to spark some rainfall which will be moderate at times around the Roma, St George and Charleville area and then as we get out towards early tomorrow morning this rainfall is going to begin to build through parts of southeastern Queensland. This rainfall is important for southeastern Queensland because it's one of the reasons why we're not expecting widespread severe thunderstorm activity in the southeast tomorrow but we're going to see light showers tending to light rainfall at times through much of southeastern and even parts of central Queensland up on the Capricornia coastline. There's going to be lots of rainfall and shower activity pouring in towards this part of Queensland uh, and we might be seeing some half decent rainfall accumulations as well anywhere between 5 to 20 millimeters expected through parts of the scenic rim the uh, Burnett Forecast District for example and also through parts of the Granite Belt and the Darling Down some half decent rainfall accumulations may occur there. Brisbane is probably looking somewhere between the 5 to 10 millimetre mark and most of that is going to fall early tomorrow morning out to about early tomorrow afternoon when rainfall is expected to ease off and clear out of the Brisbane area and the Gold Coast area by around 2 o'clock just in time for rush hour. We'll keep this rainfall up on the Sunshine Coast and into the Fraser Coast and the Capricornia Coast though that's expected to persist into later afternoon hours around 4 or 5 o'clock before finally clearing off and then after about midday going to begin to see a couple of thunderstorms develop out in towards central Queensland again in a pretty similar place to where they're developing today albeit a little bit further south so Charleville, Augathella, Wyandra, Kanamala is where the thunderstorms are expected to get themselves going and some scattered patchy thunderstorm activity is also expected closer to the border down around Thallon and St George extending across towards Gundawindi developing from about two o'clock Queensland time and then over the border at around 2 30 or three o'clock New South Wales time through the northeast of New South Wales. Thunderstorms are going to quickly develop through Friday afternoon and evening we're expecting severe thunderstorms to develop very quickly in towards central western Queensland so we're uh, between Roma out towards Charleville uh, and St George out to Kanamala in this area around Wyandra. Strong severe thunderstorms are also possible into the north central parts of New South Wales through parts of Moree, Narrabri and Inverell up towards Gundawindi in Queensland, Thallon and St George also in the firing line for potentially strong or even significant severe thunderstorms and on the top end of this rainfall here you can't see Rockhampton on the map right now but they are also expecting some thunderstorms up there with light rainfall continuing through parts of the Capricornia coastline. A couple of thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon and evening are possible into the scenic rim and one or two thunderstorms, one or two of which could also be severe, are likely over the border into the northeast of New South Wales. But the key point is tomorrow afternoon isn't going to bring anything crazy to southeast Queensland, in particularly the Brisbane or the Gold Coast area because of this rainfall, which is going to last throughout most of the morning into the early afternoon. Temperatures are just not going to increase through the Brisbane or the Gold Coast area. Typically for thunderstorm days like this, we need to be looking at temperatures around the 29 to 30 degrees mark to begin to get thunderstorms off the ground along the coastline and then further inland getting closer to 35 degrees celsius and that's just not going to happen tomorrow widespread temperature forecasts through southeastern queensland out towards toowoomba and warwick lie between the 24 to 27 degree range and that's just not going to be warm enough to get these thunderstorms off the ground so conditions not looking good for thunderstorm activity through brisbane and the gold coast tomorrow which is good because it gives us another day to prepare for severe thunderstorm activity which is going to occur on saturday we will see the upscaled remnants of these thunderstorms that are going to better develop 
develop out and towards Queensland. There's much better conditions for these thunderstorms out into central Queensland. So the upscaled remnants will join up into squall lines, moving through Roma by around 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening, and then up towards Injun to Rum and Chinchilla by 7.30 or 8 o'clock. And some scattered thunderstorm activity is also forecast into the lower Burnett area around the Kingaroy area. And a couple of thunderstorms will also make it into the Wyvernhoe outlook in Sanford Valley. They're not expected to be anything too strong. And Brisbane and the Gold Coast after about 7 o'clock may see one or two thunderstorms, but they will be very weak in nature. We're not talking about anything crazy. We may be just talking about some isolated heavy rainfall and maybe a strong wind gust or two, but again, nothing crazy is expected. The strongest stuff will lie further inland and even out towards Toowoomba and Warwick. It's doubtful whether we'll see severe thunderstorm activity out there. If it is going to occur, it's going to happen a lot further out towards the west and then it'll have to track east northeasterly uh, for a couple of hours before it gets into these uh, less favourable zones for severe thunderstorm activity. So Friday is not a concerning day through southeast Queensland. I'm sure you've got the memo of that right now. It's not overly a worrying setup for severe thunderstorm activity. Yes, we will see some stronger stuff further inland, but they're no stranger to that at this time of the year. But for southeast Queensland, not a big concern at this point in time. Pushing things forward, you can see Saturday starts off very, very dry. We don't have any of that rainfall activity. We've also got very limited uh, low and upper level cloud cover through southeastern Queensland, which means those temperatures are going to very, very quickly rise. We're going to see these temperatures shoot up into the 30s by the early afternoon. And that's going to be very favorable for severe thunderstorm activity through southeastern Queensland and also just through parts of greater southern and central Queensland as well. Thunderstorms are expected to start early on Saturday as this moisture continues to push in through parts of central Queensland. We're expecting thunderstorms to get themselves going from about midday out into central western Queensland, west of Injun and Roma. Severe thunderstorm activity will be quick to get started as well north of Tambo and Yarraka up towards Longridge, Mutterborough and Winton. Some strong thunderstorm activity is expected out here. And then thunderstorms will quickly begin developing after about 1.30 and 2 o'clock for New South Wales and about 12.30 to 1 o'clock over into the scenic rim of uh, Queensland and maybe one or two thunderstorms as well around that time into the Brisbane area as well. Thunderstorms are going to be very hit or miss though. Uh, throughout Saturday afternoon, particularly in the early afternoon into the Brisbane area. We're expecting slow moving pulse thunderstorms to be kind of the mode uh, of things. And we will see a nice cluster of pulse thunderstorm activity just towards the north of Brisbane and Ipswich, and also some decent pulse thunderstorms possible into the scenic rim as well, so Boona and Bow Desert, and over the border and towards New South Wales. But all in all, conditions aren't overly favourable for these uh, thunderstorms to be either quick moving. You can see these wind speeds here into the uh, lower levels between that 20 to 25 knots, so they're really not going to be getting themselves going that quickly, particularly on the New South Wales side of things, but also conditions in the atmosphere aren't overly favourable for severe thunderstorms to be quite widespread or even strong for that matter. It's quite a dry environment, uh, apart from one or two spots into the upper levels and also into the lower levels, but all things considered, we will see a couple of thunderstorms getting themselves going through Saturday uh, afternoon into the Brisbane area. They're just going to be very few and far between and going to resemble more of a January to March type outbreak as opposed to a October or November powerful severe thunderstorm outbreak. And that's also the memo that we're beginning to see for Saturday as well. Whilst we're not talking about about severe thunderstorms resembling their outbreaks of the previous three or four weekends. We're talking about something that resembles more of an early uh, summer type outbreak. It's a little bit weaker in nature with more thunderstorms and more rainfall as opposed to more giant hail and more damaging wind gusts, which is what we've been seeing for the recent weekends. Still though, strong thunderstorms are expected and if we continue to push this forward, you can see some very strong and widespread thunderstorm activity expected outside of Toowoomba and Warwick and pulse thunderstorms of an outback variety are expected out towards central western Queensland, so Charleville, Wyandra, Kanama, Orchid Fella Tambo, Adavale, Quilpie, even out towards Thargaminda and then north towards Longridge and Mataburra. These thunderstorms here may not have the most intense precipitation rates, but there will be plenty of lightning within them. There'll also be some strong wind gusts as well. And this is more sort of the thunderstorms that we see across northern Queensland around this time of the year and also parts of the Gulf Country, as opposed to these thunderstorms that we typically see at this time of the year in the Channel Country, which are generally speaking large hailers. These thunderstorms aren't looking like they're going to be too serious on that front. These thunderstorms are then going to ease off a little bit out of southeastern Queensland by the looks of things at around 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon before piping up again uh, into the western parts of the scenic rim out towards Toowoomba, Warwick, Gatton, Ipswich, Lowood, those locations, then rising up into the uh, Wyvernhoe outlook between 5 o'clock out to about 7 o'clock, and then severe thunderstorms are expected to get themselves going into the Wyvernhoe outlook and then up into parts of the South Burnett forecast district. Not expecting anything too crazy once again, and we could, be st we could still be seeing some strong thunderstorm activity here. Plenty of heavy rainfall is also a possibility and some damaging wind gusts as well. 
cannot be written out off. There will be some strong thunderstorm potential as well through parts of the border ranges in the scenic rim and also some strong thunderstorms expected to get themselves going around the Wallingar and the Stanthorpe area too. And this is another area that I feel could be overlooked on Saturday, but basically anywhere towards the west of Toowoomba and Warwick out towards Gundawindi and then down towards Narrabri and Moree in New South Wales, there will be an area of isolated supercell potential here. So we will be seeing some organized thunderstorm activity get itself going. And that's where we see our strongest thunderstorms with potentially very dangerous impacts, including damaging to locally destructive wind gusts, large, potentially giant hailstones, and some very heavy rainfall. So the potential is there towards the west of Warwick and Toowoomba, but I don't feel like right now it includes the Warwick or the Toowoomba area. And again, it is very much dependent on whether or not there's going to be cloud coverage in the morning, which at this stage, it doesn't look like there's going to be, but we could still have a few factors holding back a few of these thunderstorms in this part of Queensland. I don't think it's going to be a big problem though for these thunderstorms and certainly some strong ones expected towards the west of Toowoomba, Warwick, and then down towards Wollongarra, Gundawindi, and then north of Moree and Inverell and Narrabri in the northeast of New South Wales. Some strong thunderstorm activity is most certainly possible down there. These thunderstorms will then part off a little bit. Well, we're still expecting shower and thunderstorm activity tending to rain with embedded thunderstorms to move over central western and central eastern parts of Queensland. Basically, in this entire area here, we're expecting scattered thunderstorm activity to uh, begin to develop once again later on Saturday night into early Sunday morning. And this is going to tend to rainfall at times. We've got a lot of moisture coming in from the north, and this is going to fuel this rainfall that's expected to begin to build in this part of Queensland, and not to mention all the moisture coming in from the northwest as well uh, through parts of central Australia. We've got heaps of moisture coming in from this direction, and this is all going to converge around a low pressure centre that's expected to develop somewhere around here Saturday night into Sunday morning, and that is going to result in rainfall. It's going to be steady, but it will add up. We're expecting some half decent rainfall accumulations, thunderstorms persisting through the scenic rim of the Brisbane area, Gold Coast as well, then out towards Toowoomba and Warwick through Sunday morning, some of which could be severe and quite strong in nature. And then these thunderstorms will begin to pull away and ease off as the rainfall then begins to surge in. We'll see some scattered severe thunderstorm potential on Sunday afternoon here at around the Tambo and the Augathella area, but then the rainfall is really going to begin to push in towards southeastern Queensland. And from what we've been talking about the last couple of days, and as I've just mentioned, all of that moisture that's going to be coming in from the north and also from the northwest, that's all going to converge in this part of Queensland. We're going to see plenty of decent rainfall after about one or two o'clock in the afternoon, right out to about five or six o'clock in the evening when rainfall is then expected to ease off just a little bit across southeastern Queensland. Maybe that'll last until about seven or eight o'clock. Still, we could be seeing some strong thunderstorms persisting out to about eight o'clock as well, but they'll bypass the Brisbane area for the most part, and they'll continue to add to the heavy rainfall accumulations we're expecting, with some places at this point likely to have 100 millimetres in the gauge over the last couple of days, in particularly through the South Burnett forecast districts. We'll be talking Gympie, Kingaroy, and inland from the Glasshouse Mountains, but also some half-decent rainfall accumulations expected through parts of the scenic rim as well. And with that, late on Sunday night, that will bring an end to our multi-day severe thunderstorm outbreak. Once the last severe thunderstorm dissipates on Sunday, that should be it for at least a couple of days. Severe thunderstorms are then not expected through southeast Queensland for a good stretch of time, at least until next weekend, and potentially quite a lot later than that. In fact, we don't actually have any massive severe thunderstorm outbreak that's kind of catching my eyes until about the 25th or the 26th of uh, November, when we may be seeing a couple of severe thunderstorms once again pipe up on the forecast through southeastern Queensland. But they're not ones that I'm overly concerned about at this point in time. But it's looking like it's going to be a wet one. The main risk with this or the main kind of impact that's coming through with this severe thunderstorm outbreak is of course the rainfall. There are some decent rainfall accumulations on the forecast with major forecast modelling here, pinpointing between 60 to 100 millimetres through a few locations, in particularly through parts of the South Burnett forecast districts, so like I said, Kingaroy and Gympie, and some scattered decent rainfall accumulations as well around the 50 to 75 millimetre mark expected through the Brisbane area, particularly up in the Wyvernhoe Outlook and the Sanford Valley, and then falls decreasing a little bit to about 30 to 50 millimetres through the Gold Coast in the northeast of New South Wales, increasing as you get further inland to put falls pushing closer to that 75 millimetre once again, or oh, that 75 millimetre mark once again. We're expecting lots of thunderstorms out around the Injun, the Roma and the Tarum area. So whilst none of this rainfall is going to come through thick and fast from any one cloud band that's coming through, we're just going to see a consistent spread of thunderstorms in this part of central Queensland here. So we may be seeing some decent rainfall accumulations between 50 to 75 millimetres around the Injun, Roma and Tarum area, but they'll be spread pretty evenly throughout the course of Friday, Saturday, and parts of Sunday as well. The heaviest rainfall accumulations are, as mentioned, in, expected into the Wyvernhoe Outlook area, plus also through parts of the border ranges and the scenic rim. Toowoomba and Warwick also have a chance of picking up triple-figure rainfall accumulations, whereas for Brisbane, it's likely to be marginally lighter. Uh, the rainfall out there, but still definitely some good rainfall accumulations expected. A couple of dozen millimetres expected through the Brisbane a uh, area as well, and that will include all of the suburbs. In short, this is definitely the best rainfall we've seen for a while, potentially for the last couple of weeks across southeast Queensland since 
uh, Tuesday, I believe, three weeks ago, where we had a couple of hundred millimeters fall in the Springbrook area. Uh, but this is definitely going to be the most expansive amount of rainfall that we've seen for the last couple of months, at least. I mean, if we zoom out uh, of this picture here and I show you what we're expecting through parts of central Queensland from now right out to Sunday, a massive swathe of locations expecting at least 25 millimeters, with a lot of these places expecting closer to 50 or 75 millimeters as well. Big rainfall accumulations through southeastern Queensland, but also a pretty good spread of rainfall expected through parts of central Queensland as well. And even into the northwest of Queensland with steady shower and thunderstorm activity that's going to be pouring in from the northwest, we could also be seeing some half decent rainfall accumulations up there. And that's not to forget over and towards New South Wales as well. Thunderstorm activity expected on Saturday and Sunday. I'll touch on that in tomorrow morning's forecast update as well. Uh, but we could also be seeing some half decent rainfall accumulations through parts of the northeast of New South Wales and even through parts of the mid-north coast as well. Rainfall is expected to be a lot lighter through parts of the Whit Sundays and up towards Mackay and Townsville and even uh, much of the Cape York Peninsula, uh, especially the Pacific Ocean side of things. Even, even though we've got that moisture pouring in from the Pacific Ocean, it's all in the mid-levels and it's not translating to rainfall at this point in time. Their chance for rainfall is coming, but it is going to be about a week or two behind this rainfall here that's coming in towards interior parts of Queensland. Now, in terms of the comparison, how, does it, how do these thunderstorms that are on the forecast through southeast Queensland stack up to, against the thunderstorms that we've been seeing over the last couple of weekends through southeast Queensland? Well, not very well. These thunderstorms could get severe. Like I said, we've got that risk of supercells on Saturday, which could mean some very dangerous thunderstorms. But this is overall not a very dangerous thunderstorm outbreak. It's a pretty tame one by southeast Queensland standards, particularly in November. So doubtful on whether or not I'm actually going to be running live coverage on this, but I'll run plenty of video coverage as well. So make sure you do stick around for that. But it's not a fair comparison. This is more of an outbreak that resembles uh, kind of a setup that we'd see in February or March, for example, where we've got more sort of rain-based thunderstorms and squall lines coming through in the afternoon and the evening. Lots of convective activity is most certainly expected and will very likely occur through southeast Queensland and parts of south central Queensland, but it's likely to have the bulk of that as uh, a non-severe variety if that makes sense. So instead of where we see most severe thunderstorms in October and November through southeast Queensland becoming severe or even very dangerous severe thunderstorms, we're sort of expecting a more kind of 80-20 split where 80% of the thunderstorms remain non-severe and relatively weak and about 20% of the thunderstorms end up becoming strong severe thunderstorms and even less of those become dangerous severe thunderstorms. And I believe we'll be able to count on our fingers how many dangerous severe thunderstorms we have at the end of this outbreak when everything is all done and dusted. So it's not a fair comparison and it really isn't something to be overly concerned about but if you do live in a flash flood prone area it's a good idea to make sure that you are ready for some severe thunderstorms that could bring the risk of flash flooding it's going to be another wet weekend bosses weather set to continue across southeast queensland for the latest and greatest information then make sure you are subscribed to my channels as well and go and check me out over on facebook for some more regular weather updates on these severe thunderstorms i'll uh, i've got some plenty uh, or plenty of detailed weather coverage happening over there as well if you have enjoyed this forecast update or found it informative or enjoyable in any way shape or form then please you can consider leaving a like and also subscribe uh, if you are brand new. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not on the show without them and as always, their support is massively appreciated. And if you too want to get your name mentioned at this time of the forecast up there, then click the join button down below. It's the best way to financially support the Cyclones Oz channel. But that's going to be all for me today and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.